Hey guys, this is Star Tolyong, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about one of the latest patch 7.30 craziest new meta right click damage dealer, Bone Flexor. I'll be going through all the new meta heroes, builds, and playstyle in the next coming videos, so be sure to subscribe with notification on before anything gets nerfed. If you ever played against a late game clinks, you will realize that no matter who you are or what you do, you tend to take a lot of damage from clinks even when he's not hitting you at all. And then when you try to kill him, you're barely doing any damage to him because you have 5000 HP and 30 armor and you're probably dead before even getting him to half HP. The problem with the old clings is that he takes forever to farm and reach late game and usually loses the game before being anywhere close. But in this meta, the new clings is a farming machine and tend to reach late game before a lot of heroes. I've tested it over 20 times and it feels like I'm always close to max item at 30 minutes every single game doing specific moves and making specific plays and it is literally a ranged raid boss when you get to the point. Number 1. Kling's got a new spell. Burning Barrage to replace Strafe. The range of the spell is further than you think, and the first arrow is always going to be shorter than the rest. Even though it is not stated in the spell, extra attack range like Dragonlance or Groove Bow will increase the cast range of the spell, but cast range item like Aetherlance or Kin Optic will not increase the range of the spell. Skeleton summons from the Shard and Agonyms will also benefit from the range. What this means is that with the range, you can be very efficient farming neutrals by pulling out two camps and clearing them all at once. The level of your searing arrow will be applied to your burning barrage and you do not need to toggle the spell for it to work. Burning barrage also ignores evasion and can be used when you are disarmed. This makes clings a lot harder to deal with even without putting the summons into play yet. Number 2. The reason why it is so hard to stop a clings from farming is because of how fast he can clear the wave and disappear from the map and there is a specific skill build that will accelerate the farm exponentially. Take Searing Arrow at level 1 and level 3 for obvious laning reasons, then max out Burning Barrage by level 7. At this point, your skill build should be 4, 2, 0, 1. Pretty simple. Keep the Searing Arrow at level 2 and then max out your Skeleton Walk. It is important to max out this Invis spell early because you will need it to run around the map really quickly and time it together with the Burning Barrage. Level 4 Burning Barrage has a 16 seconds cooldown and the level 4 Skeleton Walk has a 17 seconds cooldown. This will allow you to time these two spells together and farm around the map like crazy and still be able to join team fights. It is very tempting to take the 30 searing arrow damage talent because it is damaged right? But no, from my past experiences, taking the minus 5 seconds cooldown on your skeleton walk will do more damage and allow you to be more flexible in your map movement and playstyle. 12 seconds cooldown skeleton walk means that you can literally be everywhere clearing every wave and joining every fight because you are constantly running at 535 movement speed. It is very hard to catch you without proper coordination. Trust me, it will all make sense soon. Number 3. Since Burning Barrage will proc attack modifier, Maelstrom is the obvious choice to accelerate your farm. For Desolated Believers, here's a damage test for you. When you're farming Ancient Stack or taking a team fight, assuming you hit all 6 shots, Deso will do about 800 to 850 damage with Max Burning Barrage and Searing Arrow and the cheaper Maelstrom will do about 900 damage. If you add the Blightstone with the Maelstrom, which by the way it is still cheaper than the Desolator, you will do from 1000 to 1200 damage. Then go for Dragonlance into Skadi. If you need a BKB in between, you can get a BKB after Dragonlance. If you feel kinda stonks, you can get Maelstrom into Skadi, then go back to the Dragonlance. Skadi here is the key to achieve the raid boss mode. Question: Why don't you want to build more early damage like Daedalus to do even more damage? It is because when you purchase the shot at 20 minutes and start spawning two skeletons and by the way you are going to spawn at least four skeletons every single fight because of the skeleton walk kunal talent which is about 120% of your damage and is going to total up to 220% of your total damage. With Skadi, it is going to be incredibly hard for anyone to get out of the right clicks of you and these skeletons and with death pack, you should be sitting around 3 to 4,000 HP. It is almost impossible to man fight you after the Skadi purchase and you are approaching raid boss mode here. If you want more damage after the Skadi, you can always go back to Daedalus or MKB but I will recommend you getting the Skadi first because that is a major power spike.
Number 4. The laning phase is pretty easy to play. Just shoot your enemy out of the lane. The only detail that I would recommend you do is to get a quilling blade and cut down all these little hiding spots because most players that get shot by clings will tend to retreat into the trees. So if there's no trees, they will take a lot of damage and get completely zoned out of the lane. I do not recommend Blightstone in the laning phase. And again, speaking from experience here, Blightstone costs 300 gold for minus 2 armor. A ring of protection costs 175 gold for plus 2 armor. The counter is way cheaper and most of the time, you can get your enemy low in lane without the Blightstone, but it is very unlikely that you kill them. This 300 gold is actually not worth it at all, at least in the laning phase. Flash from your way to level 9, and this is when you have 2 points in Skeleton Walk. Your movement speed will increase from 385 to 435, and this is when you start moving around the map really quickly. Level 9 is when you begin the split push and farm your enemy's farm, or even join team fights. Once you hit level 15 with minus 5 seconds Skeleton Walk, this is how it looks like from your opponent's point of view. Clinks showed up with Burning Barrage, got a kill, fires a few more shots, and disappear. Clinks showed up again with Burning Barrage, got another hero, and disappear again, while Clinks once again reappear. Takes out the enemy carry, and now he's gone again. There's no escape for this Mirana. Finally, the moment that you have been waiting for, the raid boss mode. There are two main ways you can execute the late game clings. In most cases, you want to stay invisible until you have your next skeleton walk off cooldown. Find a good position to fire your first scuddy shot, do the damage, then reposition. Remember that every time you change your position, you are repositioning the skeletons at the same time. You can repeat this multiple times until all your enemies are dead. In the late game, you should be sitting around 4000 HP, doing about 500 damage per hit without crits. Put in the skeleton you do easily a thousand damage per shot. There are not many scenarios where your enemy can man fight you at this point, so you can be very cocky with your positioning and try to take out big calls all by yourself. I mean, look at this stupid attack range. How are you supposed to get away from this? If you are certain that you will be standing your ground the entire time, you can do this instead. Pop in this while you're in this. This will spawn two skeletons instantly. Then use Burning Barrage. Because you do not need attack speed to get off these four skeletons, it is the fastest way you can get off the four skeletons at the start of the fight. When you're doing this, you have to wait for a split second for the invis to fade before using the barrage else the skeleton won't spawn. Overall, I think that this hero is incredibly overpowered from the farming to the map movement to the team fights and the ability to overpower the entire enemy team alone. You should definitely give this hero a shot before it gets nerfed. But what is incredibly powerful and won't get nerfed is this baby Razor Nomo Chroma Speakers. Just like Clinks, it has the power to blast your enemy out of existence. The custom woven glass fiber 3 inch drivers will produce tighter sounds and allows you to hear distinct layer and audio details. The back of the speaker is designed to to increase the base output so the next time you get a rampage your neighbor will be notified links are in the description thank you for staying to the end of the video shout out to my sugar chat for the support and i'll see you in the next video